media and the culture of peace. Wow. Okay. So, uh, I, supposedly, media should be one uh, of the one of the agents of change, uh, societal change. Um, so, again, supposedly there should be uh, a promotion uh, of a culture of peace through both mainstream and alternative media. However, the case. Uh, in Cyprus and elsewhere is that the media are perpetuating the culture of violence, the culture of war, and which makes our work as educators more difficult. Um, we, live, we, live in a, we live in a society that uh, it is, unfortunately, it is easier and more profitable to sell violence than peace. Peace is not as profitable. Peace is not uh, making corporate money, let's say. So even though there, there are efforts from civil society, because that's the perspective I'm speaking from, uh, to, to promote a culture of peace through media, through communication channels that uh, can reach out to thousands of people. And not only the people who are already positively inclined or uh, engaged in a culture of peace. Um, current, current practices in the, med in the media and the fact that most people who work in the media are media illiterate, according to my opinion, uh, makes um, makes the effort to establish or construct a culture of peace even more difficult. Can you tell us what do you mean by mediating? Okay, no problem. So Uh, neighbors chicken looks like a goose to uh, the neighbors. Yes, yes. yes of so, <laughs> so it tastes better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, 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 true. Of the kiss holder. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It is in a taste of the kiss holder. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my goddess. And you refer to Aphrodite. Oh my goddess. You are interviewing a Pavian here. Sorry. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. so... Uh, from your perspective, why do you think media literacy is, is important? It is important because communicating... Media literacy, media literacy is uh, quite important since uh, communicating messages, uh, communicating um, information to people, um, is, is a basis for establishing good relationships uh, and uh, trust, understanding and dialogue between people, um, like uh, states, cultures and so on. So for someone who works in the media to be media literate, meaning to understand that the message that, that uh, he or she needs to send out has to be uh, true, honest uh, and reach uh, to as many people as possible, it's important, especially in the construction of a culture of peace, it is very important because um, it, it puts the basis for a good, um, how do you say, intercultural understanding, mutual respect and building uh, relationships that are based on trust and honesty rather than fear or um, animosity or like sentiments that are negative. So what you are trying to do, do you think that you've been supported by, by the media, like promoted mm -hmm. or, or um, do they show interest, for example, when you have an event? Or? I think uh, civil society, are we talking about Cyprus? I think, yes. yeah, I think uh, um, 
civil society, uh, in my efforts to, um, uh, to reach out to the media, uh, there have been times that uh, our efforts have been embraced uh, by mainstream media, because when, when, when we talk about media now, I'm talking mostly about mainstream media. Alternative media have always been supportive, but unfortunately they don't have as much outreach as mainstream media. And if we need to communicate the message of a culture of peace, understanding, um, um, dialogue, critical thinking perspectivity, and reach out to people, like not only in the buffer zone, but uh, all over the place in Cyprus, we need mainstream media. So I would say that civil society does not have the strategies uh, and does not have the communication tools to reach out to mainstream media. And that's, I mean, we are blaming mainstream media that they are not promoting the efforts of civil society enough. However, it is also the civil society to blame for not investing enough time, energy and money from the projects or from the funds allocated for peace projects on communications. I would also say that there are a lot of people who are involved in communications who don't have experience in civil society. So you might have like an amazing person who works in communication with a master's, with experience in the corporate sector or in media or in mainstream media, but when he or she joins the civil society, it is tough to relate the cause to the audience or relate uh, the cause to th the message that he or she needs to send. So it's usually uh, when, when, we work, when we work very hard, when we are strategic and when we design a good communication strategy, we are covered by mainstream media. If not, there is not enough coverage and I mean it, it, goes, both, it goes both ways. Of course, I mean, I think uh, we need to develop um, advocacy tools in order to reach out even to the most difficult audiences. And sometimes, because I have worked in projects or, or I have been in initiatives which were like, uh, but why send a press release to this medium, to this uh, TV station? I mean, they are either conservative, they are against reconciliation, why should I send it? In the last projects that we did, because we have been very persuasive, we have been calling people, we have been trying to befriend people who are in, uh, in mainstream media which are against reconciliation, we have managed to get our activities even through those channels. So You're talking to a wider community here through your work mm. and I want to ask you, critical thinking and media mm. and the wider community, mm. can you put these three together? Critical thinking, media, and the wider community. Yes. I should put this in a context. So, <sighs> critical thinking is something that can be developed and should be developed through, I would add another word, which is education. It should, uh, because media is, uh, is informal education. We have formal, non-formal, uh, and informal education. Formal education education is a schooling. Non-formal is what we do in civil society through our workshops, through our conferences and seminars. And there's also informal education, which can be media, there can be peer-to-peer -peer communication, it can be educating someone in the family or through friends. Uh, if we want uh, critical thinking to be developed uh, in the media, we should train media people on how to to engage um, in, a, in, in an exploration of sources, either those uh, like so sources that uh, uh, journalists use or reporters use or media people. Here we use his historical sources, for example. For a journalist, a, a journalist uses um, sources as well. So uh, they have to be critical and able to filter what is real information, what is fake, what is uh, violence, what is peace what is positive piece, what is negative piece, and then be able to broadcast or communicate the message to the people. So education, both for the people and for everyday people, students, families, so on, and the people who work in the media could facilitate, could assist in developing critical thinking through the media. So the one that sends the message and the recipient both understand uh, what is what is what is it that they are trying to to hear, learn, or communicate? Mm -hmm. Active citizenship and critical thinking requires a lot of information. My question is: Do you think in Cyprus people are equipped with the, what they need to access information so they they make informed opinions? You talked about having a lot of information in order to be 
to develop critical thinking. I wouldn't say it's a lot of information. It's the right information or information that is seen through multi-perspectivity and is seen through a lens that is not uh, either like uh, according to, to people's ideology, people's interests, people's benefits. It's about having access to information that, um, that has been, uh, it's, it's comprehensive, it's holistic and it's, um, I wouldn't say filtered because filtered uh, relates to censorship. I would say that um, information that is that is the result of a research, an investigation, an inquiry, either by teachers or media people in this case. So what we need is not a lot of information. Information, everybody has access to a lot of information, I think, now. Especially in Cyprus, uh, I mean, in our region, there's, I mean, it's unthinkable how much information we have access to through internet, social media, uh, mainstream media and so on. It's the uh, information that is the result of an investigation of a research that we need in order to develop critical thinking. Yeah. I have a question. As an organization, have you ever applied to a governmental body to ask for any information, like to use in your, uh, in your project, for example? We have asked support to promote our projects. Hmm. And again, I will go back. Uh, uh, we asked uh, we asked for information for a public organization uh, in order to facilitate our work to reaching out to people, mostly teachers and students. Uh, and again, the, the strategy that we, we used is not to consider that they would be hesitant or uh, even like, how do you say, against what we are doing, but we, we knocked on doors of people who would be uh, traditionally against us. And there were results because when you sit on a table with someone and you uh, and there is a, a dialogical process there, it is easier to earn the other and send your message out there. Uh, but yes, there have been cases that we have uh, both for our research projects. We have asked information from public uh, institutions like archives, museums, and so on. And uh, for our workshops and trainings for teachers and students, we have asked. Um, information and access to schools from educational authorities and we have gained it and we have also managed to promote our educational material through public institutions educational authorities it's how um, you work it's it's you, we need to sometimes in civil society we associate civil society with a specific ideology and the people we are trying to reach out are from a specific audience well I mean we, we know we all know who our allies are but we cannot only work with our allies because our impact will, will be small. If we want to increase our impact, we have to reach out to people and audiences and create new alliances that will uh, permit us to work with uh, a wider spectrum of people. Uh, obviously, you're doing a very important uh, job. Uh, but um, when you think of the uh, media ethics, for example, uh, for the sensitive uh, issues, mm. the sensitive issues, uh, how would you evaluate their um, their stand, their approach, like towards the minorities, towards the marginalized groups, mm -hmm. um, for the voice of the other, uh -huh. yeah. the opinion of the other? There is a very mono uh, when uh, regarding media ethics and how they cover sensitive issues. There is a very specific and monolithic way that sensitive issues in Cyprus, especially the ones associated with the conflict, are presented to uh, the audience across the divide in Cyprus. Uh, in both sides, uh, both through the media, uh, through education, a very specific and monolithic uh, one-sided perspective was presented uh, to people. Uh, this has been the case, unfortunately, uh, even before uh, intercommunal violence erupted in Cyprus. Um, it is unethical, uh, the least I can say. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to say that in the last years there have been uh, journalists, individuals, I wouldn't say uh, that organizations or corporations as a whole, but individuals uh, who are trying to give voice to the oppressed. And when I say oppressed, I mean marginalized groups, minorities, uh, younger generations, youth, 
whose voices are not traditionally traditionally heard and they have been <coughs> able to do this <coughs> sorry to a certain, no it's okay and um, they have been able to do this to a certain extent um i want to say something else mm. they're cutting and the, um, I was talking about media ethics and how unethical it is the way they present mm -hmm. sensitive issues. And in the education and the media, uh, they both go hands in hand and they were like one-sided. Yes. These, I mean, and there are some individuals yes. uh, who is uh, working out of this box, yes. basically. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, that's it. Okay. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. Mm. <laughs> so we can continue. Um, okay, so um, what, what about the peace journalism? How do you see the role of the peace journalism in the society? And um, how can you hmm. link it with what you are doing? Basically? Okay, regarding peace journalism in Cyprus, uh, apart from like a handful of individuals only in Cyprus. I don't. I do not see any systematic effort to cover issues that um, not only have to do with uh, covering civil society events and reconciliation events, events in the buffer zone, events pr promoting uh, rapprochement in Cyprus. For me, peace journalism is a systematic effort to present uh, as news good things that are happening in the world as well, positive news. Um, I, I don't say this in a, in a I don't want to, this to sound as like simplistic or we have to present the world as um, a happy place. And But well, the, the world is also a happy place though and nobody presents this. I mean, when people are listening only to controversies, only to violent incidents and so on, of course you are drawn into this, in, into this visual cycle and you think that uh, the world is like this and you get hopeless and you think that you cannot change it. So uh, I have had many discussions with colleagues and friends about how hopeless I can become throughout like uh, my engagement in civil society. Uh, it is also the fact that the positive news are not presented are not communicated to the people and there are a lot of positive uh, events that take place around the globe but um, they, they are hidden they, they are not presented they are not uh, media are not paying enough attention to them um, it is it is uh, one example that I give with uh, history education and and violence because people say when I teach about peace education people say but why are you telling us these things violence is inevitable war is inevitable there have been wars since the creation uh, of the human beings well no no the vast majority of the life of people on planet Earth has been characterized by cooperation and peace but our history books are full of war violence. Um, violent uh, struggles and so on. I mean, the, the positive uh, achievements and developments of the human race are not presented. So, I mean, th of course, I mean, it's natural for people to, to get hopeless. If you, if, you, if you sit and watch the 8 o'clock news, you get hopeless. I mean, even if you had an amazing day, you, <laughs> you sit in front of your TV, you watch it, and then you, you're like, okay, eh, well, yeah, I don't know. Why is that so? Why is that? Because news are full of... I told you before, because violence sells. Uh -huh. Because uh, people would have not been educated to appreciate uh, the culture of peace that um, uh, up to a certain extent uh, it's there in our society. The, all the foundations are there. We have the capacity as people to collaborate, but it is not appreciated. Mm -hmm. I mean, and through our so socialization, through our upbringing through our education, we learn that uh, the way to earn what we want is through competition and not through cooperation. So yeah, and this is promoted as a paradigm. So you need a paradigm shift there in order to, 
to, to alter the situation and change things. I have a question. Stories. Stories in peace education, stories mm. in media, sharing stories. What do you think about it? Why are stories important? Sharing stories uh, from the field is, uh, first of all, on a personal level, it's something I have earned a great deal from. Especially sharing stories from people who do similar work from different contexts or similar uh, or seemingly uh, different contexts than ours. Because, I mean, uh, we live in such an interconnected world that uh, sharing stories, both of success, of failure, obstacles, difficulties, they can, um, first of all, you don't feel that much of a burden as an individual who is working for social educational change uh, whatsoever. Um, and because you learn, it's a learning process. Sharing stories is a learning process. You create empathy, you create uh, the foundations for understanding, trust, and putting yourself in other people's shoes. What kind of media can be used for sharing stories? All kinds of media. From my perspective, I think uh, all kinds of media can be used uh, for sharing stories. I mean, uh, I mean, a medium could be storytelling, like as someone sits in a circle and reads stories to children, adults, even adults. Uh, people of all, of all ages, sharing stories on TV, sharing stories on the radio, on the newspaper, sharing personal stories on social media about the successes uh, of change, uh, the successes of uh, positive um, encounters uh, between people and peoples. Okay. Uh, Do you want to say anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I think Thanks that was very much. That was, that was okay. very good. That was very good.